They got mighty close to it, which means the cue ball does what it was meant to do, go up and down the table. I might have thought this was in when he hit it. as you were saying They're not on the color nicely this is a uh, sliding the blue into the middle he's got to avoid the yellow here not pleased look straight up to the heavens six it's almost hard to see how you can avoid the yellow on that shot from that angle. The only way you could probably avoid it was if you missed the pot in the first place. A reaction from Williams, yes, but don't misconstrue those signs. It doesn't get flustered. He hasn't actually got a shot here. It's not an easy one anyway. He can't drop into the bunch because there's a red just sticking out that I think he'd leave. What does he do? nice atmosphere here at the Guildhall and playing snoog here well I, think I first came played here in 1983 and of course it had been a venue previously then already very interested in snooker part of the world and the venue itself always creates just a lovely amphitheater great hush when players are at the table we're not full today but uh, I think when the Rockets in town we will be. The people here are enjoying this match. I remember that final when it was Stephen Hendry and Steve Davis and they came into Tina Turner belting out simply the best. What a great night that was. Because it was true, they simply were the best. 13 world titles between them. See him take this long on the shot very often. Two and a half minutes. There's, a, there's, the, there's no real shot that he can think of. In a match, Neil, where his average shot time is that of a youngster. 20 seconds. <laughs> I said it before, I played Jeff Thorburn here once, actually, and he... He was in a difficult position and he shouted out, there's only one shot here. And I'm afraid I don't know what it is. And really, Mark has just can't see a shot. It's a horrible plant he's looked at. Three minutes plus. Didn't want to play that, but he had to play something. You can't just stand there forever. Six. Well, that shot took longer to play than the shortest ever frame. <laughs> Tony Drago, was it? Against Danny Fowler, yeah. <laughs> Good to see Tony Drago back to some decent health, playing in legend snooker at the weekend. He's been poorly for almost a year. That's great news. Well, this match is, is just... Before our very eyes feel, it's starting to, to change, isn't it? You know, it's been happening now for about half an hour. Things have started to go the other way again. Well, 
I don't think Williams hasn't picked up on that vibe. He's well aware of it. And the more that Robertson misses and the, the more he has to wait to get over the line, the more anxious he will become. Oh, I think he's on the red above the black. This is OK. Four. And does the black go into the same pocket? I'm not sure. Five. Now, has he got the confidence in things to go into the bunch here? Doesn't have to. And he probably wishes he did now. Stephen Hendry would have gone into the bunch there. Reds everywhere. They'd have been. That's a brilliant recovery. Pair. 11. But again, he's not really taking the, this actual break much further. shot this is to take on. Fifteen. Just not able to sort of get things really started, is he? Even this shot, you know, knocked it in. Obviously played to miss the black. Funny old match, this. Well, a couple of frames ago, I said, I can't see him coming back in bits and pieces, but maybe he can. You never know. Matt Williams, 60. That's the appealing feature of snooker. It's never the same. Always different angles and viewpoints, perspectives. The way matches go, unpredictable. Potting some phenomenal balls for very little reward. Matt Williams won. Twenty-three ahead, protecting that lead by getting green, brown, yellow, and black safe. He's kind of parked the bus a little early in the frame, isn't he? safe as well now this is uh, how are you gonna score now lots of reds and blues <laughs> you don't see this very often you do in a local league match
He could sing a rainbow with the colours on the cushions. What a strange frame. I think Ted Lowe used to say, didn't he, that the beauty of snooker is that every frame is different. And of course he's right, you'll see a 147, you'll see something like this. You get frames where black goes out of the pocket and about 12 reds end up in, on top of it. What's unusual about this frame is that three of those colours have gone under the cushion, not because of circumstance, but by design. And those bolt colours are absolutely nailed to the cushions, aren't they? Look at them. Looks as if it's just going to be top draw rather than into the middle bag. So it's about reds and blues, as we're saying. There's absolutely no chance of at this stage him putting anything else. But if he could take four or five of them, he's well and truly in the frame. It wasn't quite like this, but Perry Manns won, won the Masters at uh, the Wembley Conference Centre in the late 70s, wasn't it? But he didn't make a 50 break. And what he did do, he's the most brilliant potter of a ball, but I'll tell you what, he was a spoiler. He didn't care where the balls were, all the colours were safe. He'd find a way of just Seven. driving his opponent mad and never having all the balls in open play. And he was content with it, and he won the Masters. He also made a world final, Perry Manns. He was a good player, but he was different to play. Perry Manns, I think he only ever made up literally a handful centuries in his entire career I think less than 10 you think correctly and yeah he was good you know he was come win a triple 12. crown event and reach the final of the world championship if you're not a good player but he was different and he would have probably enjoyed this frame he'd probably 13. beaten the pair of them at this sort of standard frame where everything's safe Nineteen. As good a nineteen break as you'll probably ever see. And now he could open this bunch up. <coughs> He's got to watch out for the two reds in the middle of them. That could just be a plant to this right corner. That would be. That would really make him feel absolutely fed up if that went in. Uh, 
No, that was good thinking. He played it slowly. He was aware of the possibility of that red dropping. I think that was a really good shot. One in front, Robertson. Never had to do this kind of mathematics before, but if he pots another five reds and five blues, that will leave Williams requiring a snooker. This is good effort, isn't it? It really is. This could be one cushion up and down on the, those three reds here. Somewhere on the left of them. Thirty. That's really impressive, you know, from a very unpromising position. Look what he's doing here. He's weaving a bit of magic. The only non Brit in the tournament to go through with a red, white, and blue break. 37. Thought he was in a very strong position, didn't he? But as I say, he didn't do it intentionally, but it was very early to 42. be on the defensive. 43. And that's a good shot as well. That really is to finish top side better than it looks. The break has been going up in increments of six points. Six more, and it's almost over. Well, it's been absolutely 49. fantastic. It looked like it was just going to be a horrible frame. And he surely isn't disappointed that he might not be able to get onto the yellow. I mean, for now, just, just be delighted with what you've achieved. How's he going to get a snooker or anything's on the cushion? That's a fantastic break. 54. It's not Neil the end Robinson. of the world. 54. That was brilliant. That really was. Nine. Reds, nine blues, and every other colour completely out of play. Two. It will just go down, Phil, won't it, as a 54 breaking years to come. I think, well, who cares? Well, I'll tell you what, it was brilliant. Matt Williams. Now, of course, the agenda changes for Williams. He needs colours off cushions. Three. 26 behind, 22 on, just one snooker. Yes, I'd have to say the balls are now more conveniently placed for getting snookers. If this goes in, it would have been curtains. Matt Williams, three. But for Williams, his chances, albeit slender, live on. away from 
shaking hands. I'm with you though, Neil. What a break that was. It would have been a fine break to win the first frame, let alone what looks like being the last. Four. From the and there it is, a fleet brown. But that was all about the, the, the blue. Neil Robertson not feeling blue, the opposite in fact, because he's through to the semi-finals of the Coral Players Championship. He's defeated the world champion, Mark Williams, by six frames.